So acoustic guitar can be kind of hard to record because there's not really one set way of doing it. One of the reasons it's complicated to record is because there are a thousand different miking techniques that people use to record an acoustic guitar. That can range from one microphone to six. But the good news is there's a lot of flexibility in between those crazy six microphone setups and our humble one microphone setup. Here's what you have to keep in mind with an acoustic guitar. It is in essence a resonance chamber. There are a few other instruments that are also resonant chamber instruments, one of those being the piano. The piano sounds the way it does because of the fact that it resonates within itself. There's a resonant chamber inside of it. There are other instruments that do the same thing, such as the congas, and it can get even more complicated. Things like a vibraphone resonate, but they don't have a chamber to do so in. They just kind of resonate through the entire room. Why am I bringing this up? Well, resonant chambers have different tonalities depending on where you put the microphone. I brought up the piano because I think it's the most obvious example of how mic placement can affect a resonance chamber. The piano's resonance chamber is so large that if we put a microphone up where the keys are and we put a microphone way down on the other side of the grand piano, you're going to get entirely different sounds. The one farther away from the keys being more bass heavy and low end, the one closer to the keys having much more high end frequencies. Luckily, it is not as complicated as a piano. Unlike a piano, a guitar has one area where sound can leave the resonance chamber. Here, I will show you. That obviously being the sound hole. So perfect, you're thinking, great, there's only one place where the sound comes out of the guitar. Let's put the microphone there. No, don't do that. It's very commonplace to put a microphone directly in front of the sound hole whenever you're recording an acoustic guitar. The issue with that is you're going to get all the resonant frequencies that a guitar produces directly thrown at the microphone at the highest SPL or sound pressure level volume that you could possibly get. This is going to lead to a lot of woofiness, a lot of low end mud, and it's gonna act a little bit like a plosive does on a microphone. There are going to be a lot of areas that are louder, more aggressive, could easily clip a microphone because of the fact that you put your microphone directly in front of the sound source. The beautiful thing about resonant chamber instruments is there is a plethora of different options to get really sweet, warm, high end, low end sounds depending on where you put the microphone. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. Obviously, the first thing we're going to talk about is the one mic position. Now there's a bunch of different ways where you can put a condenser microphone in front of a guitar and it's going to sound good, but the position I like the most is a fairly simple one. That being a condenser microphone placed around the 12th fret of the guitar with the capsule facing the sound hole. Now I've done a number of different recordings of the same song using these different microphone techniques so you can hear for yourself what they sound like. But in general, this is an extremely common placement of a microphone on an acoustic guitar, and it tends to get a lot of the sweet high-end sound from the sound holes, as well as a little bit of the bright string noise that you get uh, with the strings. There are other ways you can mic a guitar with one microphone. You can put it on a different angle on the sound hole, and you can put it farther away to get more of the room around you, although many of us don't have the best room to record in, so I might think twice about that option. But in general, I think a good idea is to make the capsule around a foot or so away from the instrument and angle it towards the sound hole. In my opinion, I would not put a microphone directly in front of a sound hole. Two benefits from the one mic technique. If you close mic the instrument like I was recommending, you're not gonna get a lot of room interference with your signal because of the fact that it is so close to the sound source itself. Another thing, you're not gonna have any phase issues. We're gonna go into phase and what that means a little bit later after I explain some two mic techniques. Now, why would you want to use two microphones on a guitar? Well, there's a few main things. One, you can make a stereo image of one guitar technique. Take one microphone, pan it to the left, take one microphone, pan it to the right, you're left with a much wider image. A lot of two microphone techniques take advantage of the room they're being recorded in and they will record the ambience of the room around you. And also we can take advantage of the fact that resonance chambers have different tones depending on where you put the microphone. You might get one tone from one side of the instrument and a completely different tone on another side of the instrument. Now there are a ton of different ways you can mic the microphone itself. I believe I have a chart I will show you about some of the different areas and all of their different sounds on an acoustic guitar. Some really common ones though are the XY pair, the AB spaced pair, a mid side recording technique, and a bloom line. In this video, we're going to be working with an AB spaced pair. This essentially implies putting two separate microphones on two separate positions of the guitar, neither of them from the exact same source. 
you'll notice on an XY configuration or a mid-side configuration, the microphones are essentially sitting at the exact same position relative to the instrument itself. The AB pair will give us a really cool contrasting image from the two microphones that we're using to record this. The problem with an AB space pair is phase. <laughs> Now, because the XY and the mid side record from the exact same position relative to the instrument itself, they're going to have minimal phase issues when compared to the AB recording technique. Now, what exactly is phase? I'm guessing if you've seen other recording tutorials, they're going to say, make sure you check your phase. Always check your phase, check your phase. But no one really describes what phase is. <clears throat> So let's do that. What you're looking at right now is not a giant MIDI note. You're looking at a sine wave. If I zoom in closely, both of these tracks are the exact same sine wave oscillating at the exact same frequency. If I put a cursor over it, the crest of one wave exactly aligns with the crest of another wave. In other words, these two sine waves are perfectly in phase. Phase is essentially having the crests and the troughs of different waveforms line up exactly. So if I listen to this, since they're both the exact same sine wave, it's just going to be the exact same sine wave at twice the volume. Now, taking something out of phase essentially means aligning what was the trough of one waveform with the crest of another. So now I move the cursor here, the trough of the top sine wave is at the crest of the bottom sine wave. This essentially cancels the waveform out. Whenever I play it, you'll hear that this is a significantly lower volume because the two waveforms are cannibalizing each other. Now there is a exact way to do this too. If I go into the EQ of Pro Tools and flip the phase of the bottom one with this button here, now listen, you shouldn't be hearing anything. That's because when a signal is perfectly out of phase with itself, the troughs and the crests of the two waveforms perfectly cancel each other. So the reason being out of phase is bad is essentially one microphone's waveform is at the trough and one microphone's waveform is at the crest and they are eating each other. The result is a lower volume and you'll find that the low end signal is oftentimes a lot less prominent. Let's take a look at the waveform of one of my guitar takes I did for the video. If I zoom in here, it's not gonna be the exact same because they are two different microphones picking up audio from two different positions relative to the sound source. But whenever I go to the crest of one waveform, it's essentially the exact same as the crest of the other waveform, meaning that these are in phase. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now let's say I flip the phase of the NT1. We're losing volume and we're losing low end. Um, so that's what it means to be out of phase. It should be noted that there is not necessarily out of phase and in phase so much as it is a spectrum. You want things to be as close as to in phase as possible, but it's never gonna be perfect because it's two different microphones from two different positions. So unless they are literally in the exact same point in space, then they're going to be just a little bit out of phase. The goal is to be as in phase as possible. I hope that was helpful. So for this AB pair, I don't have two condensers. I'm like you, I don't have all the microphones in the world, I'm a small channel. So what I've decided to do is use my SM57 close mic'd to different parts of the instrument to hear the warmth provided from that side of the resonance chamber and keep the condenser microphone in a fairly standard position and see what those sounds sound like when mixed together. I think I did one sort of oddball recording where I put the condenser kind of far away ambient mic and then I have the SM57 in the position that the original condenser was for the rest of the different recording techniques. Yeah, so take a listen. We'll just do like a run through of them and you can decide for yourself what recording scenario you like best out of what I showed you.
Okay, here's why I think one microphone recording is better for the home studio. For a large part of this video, we talked about phase. Phase is a real issue. The more the waveforms cut in and cannibalize each other, the more low end you lose. All the depth and richness of your take can be eaten up by phase issues if you don't do it properly. So with a two mic scenario, you really have to be conscious of those phase problems. And it just adds another moving part that may prevent you from producing a good recording. And like I said, a lot of these two mic scenarios are taking advantage of the room they're in. They are ambient mics or they're picking up sound from the room around them. And if you're working in a home studio, you probably don't have that great sounding of a room. So why are you picking up the ambient sounds from the space around you if it sounds awful? And the third reason, let's be real, cost. Not everyone has the means to record with a lot of different microphones. Microphones are expensive. And if you can get a very similar result or even a better result with just one microphone, why bother? Oftentimes in pop recording, we do what's called double tracking. If you're working uh, in a home studio environment, you're working on a budget, it's okay to just use one microphone. The one microphone setup works great and oftentimes better than the two mic setup for a home studio environment. Just as long as you have a good song, you're a good player, and you don't put it right in front of the sound hole. I hope that was helpful. I'm really excited to get more into recording techniques uh, and working with production as a whole. I will see you guys next time.